Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Hi, I'm Toby and welcome back to another video. Today I would like to show you through one of the most influential PhD theses ever written, and that is the work of Marie Curie. In this thesis, Marie talks about the discovery of the new elements, radium and polonium, and also describes how she gained one of the first understandings of the new physical phenomenon of radioactivity. It was for that understanding that she was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1903, the same year this thesis was published, and it was a few years later that she gained another Nobel Prize for the discovery of those new elements. This thesis was published at the University of Sorbonne in Paris when Marie was 35, and she was the first woman in France to be awarded a doctoral degree, although she was originally from Poland. So with that, let's have a little look at this really important work. The title of the thesis is Research on Radioactive Substances, and it says it's by Madame Sklodowska Curie, which is her full name. And in fact, Marie is the French version of her original name, Maria. This is a reprint of the thesis done in 1904, and this is of course not the original copy. The link is in the description to where I got this from. The original documents would probably be quite contaminated with radioactive substances, so I wouldn't want to be handling them. This is the table of contents, and the original version was in French, but don't worry, I'll show you an English translation soon. This just shows us what some of the chapters were about. We have first an introduction, a look at the history of the science, then chapter one about the radioactivity of uranium and thorium which are radioactive materials, and radioactive is actually a word that Marie used in this thesis to first describe the phenomenon that she was seeing. She then talks about some new radioactive substances that she's found, and then the subsequent chapters talk about trying to separate those new radioactive substances by some really tough chemical methods. Let's get page one of the English version over here. The introduction says that the work presented here has been worked on for the last four years, and that she is being assisted by Mr. Curie, that's Pierre, her husband, who has put aside his own work to help her on this new exciting field. The work establishes the existence of a new element, radium, but the preparation of pure chloride of radium and the determination of the atomic weight of radium form the main part of the work. This new element they have found has very curious properties, and also a new method of chemical research is established. This work was kick-started by the discovery of Röntgen rays, which we would call X-rays. These mysterious rays that could produce an image of the bones in your hand caused a lot of excitement, and around this time many new different kinds of mysterious rays were being reported. Some were kind of a false alarm, but some were very legit. We have here that Mr. Becquerel has made similar experiments on the salts of uranium. This paragraph here explains that these penetrating uranium rays were not a result of phosphorescence. That means that even when the uranium compounds were placed in complete darkness, they still continue to act on photographic plates. This was quite peculiar because at this time it was thought that for energy to be conserved, the only way for light to be emitted from a material is for it to have been first absorbed. But if you're keeping your uranium in the dark and you're still seeing these rays, then that doesn't seem to fit with the model. What it took many more years to realize is that energy is indeed being stored in these materials, but billions of years ago, and stored in the form of mass. Chapter 1 mentions that these uranium rays, or Becquerel rays, cause a gas to become a feeble conductor of electricity. With that, Marie develops a way to measure the intensity of radiation of uranium by the effect of this radiation on the conductivity of air. And down here is where she calls substances which generate Becquerel rays radioactive. This is her experimental setup here where she measures the intensity of radiation. 
What she does is to put a powder of her radioactive substance on this plate here and then she applies a potential difference across these two plates by setting up a circuit. The current in the circuit would be an indication of how well this material is acting as a conductor and therefore of how intense the radiation is. And the way that she got a measure of this current was having this quartz crystal over here which is stressed by having some weights placed upon it. This crystal is an example of the piezoelectric effect which is when a stressed crystal will cause electricity to flow. Marie's husband Pierre actually discovered the piezoelectric effect in 1883 so he was really knowledgeable about how to use this in the circuit and what they did was to apply a current that opposed the current in this circuit and the amount of weight added to this plate here would be a measure of how strong a current was needed to fully oppose this conductivity. Marie thought that it would be improbable that radioactivity would be a property belonging to only one kind of matter, so she tested a variety of materials. This table contains the results of uranium with a bunch of different uranium minerals. What is really unexpected and important about these results is that there are a few uranium minerals that have a higher radioactivity than pure uranium. This was a massive clue to the existence of a substance which is more radioactive than uranium. Considering this, she is able to identify two new strongly radioactive substances, polonium, which she's named after her homeland of Poland, and radium. They do a spectral analysis to confirm that these elements are different from elements that have already been studied. But they haven't got a pure sample of these new elements yet and the thesis then moves on to using some pretty intense chemical methods to get pure samples. A pure sample would be needed to measure things like the atomic weight and officially add these new substances to the periodic table. Here Marie writes that after working for several years to try and isolate radium and polonium, she's only succeeded in isolating radium. She failed with polonium for a few reasons, including the fact that polonium was only present in the uranium ore in very tiny trace amounts. The method for isolating radium that she describes over the next few pages in the thesis demonstrates that this was a grueling task done on an enormous scale. It shows her courage and stamina in chemistry. On this page we see the description of beautiful crystals which have formed and that's one of only three or four subjective aesthetic judgments which have snuck their way into the thesis. After starting with millions of grams of raw material, Marie ends up with a sample of radium chloride which is about one tenth of a gram. On this page here we see her finding the atomic weight of the sample and this is the purest sample here with only a trace of barium present. She lists the atomic weight as being 225. And that's actually really close to the current accepted value of 226. That's really impressive for work that was done in a very humble shed using very difficult raw materials and chemical processes that had never been done before, all to understand a mysterious property that no one had even measured before. Marie mentions that for radium, the strength of the radioactivity is on the order of 10 to the 6 higher than that of uranium. And again this is in the correct magnitude of our currently accepted numbers and again is a really great result. I found it interesting that Marie did know about the different kinds of radiation, alpha, beta and gamma rays as described by Ernest Rutherford around the same time and she has a little diagram here showing these three different rays that the gamma are the most penetrating, that alpha would be stopped after only a short distance and that these have opposite effect when acted on by a magnetic field. 
they didn't know what these types of radiation were. And in fact, the Curies are trying to formulate an explanation of their radioactivity almost a decade before the atomic nucleus would be discovered. Another page from the thesis that I found interesting was this one about the physiological effects. Now it says here that radium rays exert an action upon the epidermis. So they knew that radioactivity was having some kind of biological effect. You may know that Marie Curie ultimately died from a disease likely caused by her exposure to radiation. And that made me think that they had no idea of the effect of radiation on the body. Perhaps it is true that they didn't know this effect would be detrimental. But the experiments on this page at least show that they knew it affected the skin. In one experiment, Mr. Curie caused a relatively weak radioactive product to act upon his arm for 10 hours. The redness appeared immediately, and later a wound was caused, which took four months to heal. She then talks about some use of radioactive materials in the hospital for probably the treatment of cancers and tumors. And actually that became something very useful about these properties, and we still do use radiation to treat cancers. So when used carefully, it can actually save lives, but when not treated carefully, it can also cost you lives. Chapter four moves on to explaining what was ultimately a wrong hypothesis, that radioactivity could be communicated from one substance to another. This idea was caused by a few of their strange results, maybe explained by the fact that their samples were disappearing by radioactive decay or being absorbed into the glass. Radium is produced by the decay of uranium, and that is why they are always found together. But Marie never commented on this fact of why these two seemingly different elements would always be found together, and maybe if she had, it would have been more of a clue to explaining what was really going on. We will finish by going through Marie's conclusions. The only sentence that she chooses to put in italics is that radium is a new chemical element. So she was really proud of this discovery of a new element, and that is what she is often known for today. It's true that this is a very impressive contribution, but even more so is their discovery of the property of radioactivity, and she sums it up at the bottom here. Our researchers upon the new radioactive bodies have given rise to a scientific movement. Indeed, this would be the starting point for a lot more science and a lot more discoveries about the nature of the atom, why radiation occurs, and how we can use it. So that has been a look at Marie Curie's work. If you're feeling inspired, then you should check out today's sponsor, Brilliant. Set a goal to improve your scientific knowledge and chip away at it every day. Brilliant makes that possible with their interactive explorations and they have a mobile app so you can learn wherever you are. Their course on the chemical reaction will help to understand more about how matter transforms into other substances, which you may be interested in if you enjoyed learning about Marie Curie's work in chemistry. You can head to brilliant.org slash tibbies, the link is below, and the first 200 people to do so will get 20% off their annual subscription. Thanks to Brilliant, and thanks to my Patreon supporters for making this video possible, including today's Patreon Cat of the Day, Flash. Also, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.